Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over what the major differences are between the Idris M, the Idris P, and most importantly the Idris K, which is going to be the main focus of what I'm going to be talking about. I've already noticed more than a few differences between what I've seen from the in-game footage of the Idris M, the Squadron 42 cutscenes, and from what's been listed for it on the ship matrix. So I'm going to be going over what those differences are and how it could possibly affect the other variants. I'll start things off by going over what we already know about the Idris M. This is the military grade version of the Idris, which means that out of all of them, it's going to have the thickest armor, best components, and the strongest offensive capabilities. It has two remote turrets that are equipped with two size 4 weapons that are located in the front and alongside the flanks of the ship. And it looks like they've added two more of these remote turrets onto its underside that are more towards the back of the Idris. They're above and beyond what's listed as being part of its standard loadout, and they haven't been seen on any other iteration of this vessel that's appeared in-game, or even in any of the cutscenes that involved in Idris. So these are new additions to the ship. It has one man turret that's set on the nose of the Idris which is armed with two size 7 bearing M9A laser cannons. This turret is noticeably larger than the others and it definitely stands out from the rest of them. It also has a remote missile turret that has a size 8 rack that can shoot 10 size 5 torpedoes. And there's going to be a station located just below deck that actually feeds the missiles up and into it. And of course there's the iconic size 10 rail cannon that's mounted onto the bottom section of the ship and projects out from underneath the entrance to the hangar. It's the most devastating weapon in the Idris' arsenal, which fires ammunition that in and of itself is going to be bigger than some ships. Now this is where it starts to get a little messy when it comes to conflicting information, so bear with me on this. It's listed as having five man turrets that are armed with twin Galdarine laser repeaters, which are size 5 weapons. The Idris M has seven ports that are capable of housing this type of turret, four of which are on the top of the ship and three of them are located on the belly. Two of the belly turrets can be seen flanking the Argos hangar, while the third one covers the back of the ship and sits above the rear entrance to the main hangar. I've seen the Idris M being shown as sometimes having two of these turrets on the top deck and sometimes it has four, which may indicate that the M is going to be given an increase to the number of turrets that it has. But whether or not this is going to be a permanent upgrade or is just something that the designers are experimenting with is yet to be determined. The Idris M has already made an appearance in-game during the Invictus Fleet Week, during the Xeno Threat event, and is the main focus of the Arlington Gang mission that's been given out by Miles Eckard. The devs have been pretty open about the fact that they put the Idris in-game like this as a way to gather information as to how effective its current list of armaments are going to hold up under real battlefield conditions, particularly when it's facing off against actual players. And based on how it performs, it may be either buffed or nerfed accordingly. So its current number of turrets and the size of its weapons may actually be changed even more depending on what kinds of metrics they end up pulling from these battles. Here we go. You're clear to engage. Good kill on that Idris. We've got a problem though. Looks like they have some buddies inbound. Luke Sharp. The Idris P is a stripped-down version of the Idris M that was intended for sale to the public market. It has downgraded armor from the Idris M, but it's supposed to be faster because of this. And it's also had a few of its weapons options removed. Like, for instance, the remote missile turret has been taken away and replaced with additional cargo space. The Idris M is listed as having 831 SCUs, while the Idris P has 995. And these numbers are, of course, subject to change. The Idris P also has had its size 10 rail cannon removed, and instead of having two remote turrets, it has four. These turrets are all equipped with two size 4 Revenant Ballistic Gatlin cannons. Two of them are going to be located in the same place that they're found on the Idris M, and it's unclear as to which of the man turrets the other two are going to replace. I'm thinking that they'd most likely be placed in the two rear belly turret slots. Instead of the five man turrets that the M has, the P has six, all of which are going to be equipped with two size 5 guns. The P has 8 open slots that could be used to house these turrets. And I say 8 because the larger front turret that the Idris M has was removed from the P, so that's one more place where it could go. It's entirely possible that if the Idris M was given a bit of a bump to its weapons loadout, then it stands to reason that the P might have been given one as well. But unfortunately we're not going to be able to verify what that is until either it becomes flyable in-game or the ship matrix information gets updated. The only difference that exists between the internal structure of the M and the P is that that room that feeds the torpedoes to the remote turrets has been removed from the P, which uses that open space to hold extra cargo. Other than that, everything else that you'd find on both the frigates is going to be exactly the same. 
This includes the armory, med bay, bridge, firing range, briefing room, engineering section, Argo bay, and yes, even the two hangars are going to be the same. And for those who don't know, the Idris has a main hangar bay and a second auxiliary hangar. The main hangar is officially described as having enough room to house two gladius sized fighters and a third smaller ship. But data miners have already shown us that the Idris can hold far more than this, and I really look forward to being able to do an if it sits it fits video for it and showing off what its actual storage capability is. The second hangar is located in the belly of the ship, which is where the Argo MPUV is kept. So far, it's the only one of two areas of the ship that have not been shown off either during the Vertical Slice episode of Squadron 42 or in the Gamescon presentation that first showcased a flyable Idris in-game. That brings me to the Idris K. The Idris K isn't an upgrade or a different version of the Idris. The K stands for Kit. What it is is an aftermarket kit that can be applied to both the Idris M and the Idris P. And it was presented to me in kind of a confusing way, and at first, I didn't quite understand how it was supposed to work until after talking with a representative from CIG about it. If you've purchased it and look at its list of contents, it's all blank, and it doesn't have an option for you to be able to apply the upgrade to an Idris, nor does it have any descriptions written in it or about it. That's because it doesn't work like a CCU upgrade. Instead, think of it as a collection of parts that you can use to mix and match with any version of the Idris that you currently own allowing you to be able to replace any of its default turrets and guns individually with anything from the kit. The CIG rep said that they were considering changing how it works because it was creating a lot of confusion amongst Idris owners, but after understanding what it is, I hope that they don't. Because I really like the idea of how it works and then having control over what parts of the kit that I can choose to use or not use. I'd rather that they just alter its description to be a little bit more, I don't know, descriptive. The kit itself consists of a size 10 Exodus laser beam, four bearing M2C point defense systems, and two anti-missile launchers. The artwork for it depicts the missile launcher as being a replacement for the forward most facing turrets on the M, you know, the ones that are armed with the two size 7 weapons. And for anyone who doesn't know, a point defense system are pre-bladed turrets, and in this case are the ones that could be affixed to any of the Idris's size 6 turret mounts. A blade is going to allow a turret to be set to automatically fire on incoming missiles, it can act as an anti-fighter screen, or it can slave direct control of the turrets to the pilot or to another station. And like I said before, the kit comes with four of them. The kit isn't going to make the P more powerful than the M, and it's not going to change the fact that the M is still going to be the best option for destroying big ships. The rail cannon is more powerful than the laser, and it isn't going to drain nearly as much energy or affect the ship's other systems as much as the Exodus would. The M is also going to have stronger armor and comes equipped with higher performing default components. What the kit is going to do is increase the Idris's anti-fighter defenses by providing equipment that's been designed to deal with swarms of smaller ships, while the size 10 laser beam represents a powerful alternative to the rail cannon. And just like with everything else in Star Citizen, it has its own individual strengths and weaknesses. But I'd be willing to bet that on average, the TTK for both of these size 10 weapons will end up being the same. The only thing that'll end up being different about them is how they apply their damage. Like, for instance, the rail cannon is fired by holding the attack button down to charge it up, and then you release it to shoot. But it'll lose its charge if you hold the attack down for too long, which makes it difficult to hit anything that's smaller than a hammerhead. It's not impossible to do, but it is difficult. The projectile speed for the Exodus laser beam is going to be, for all practical purposes, a hit-scan weapon, which is going to be a necessary feature if you intend to land a shot on a moving target with a relatively slow platform like the Idris. And as an extra benefit, it doesn't use physical ammunition, which means that you're going to be able to use it a lot more frequently than the rail cannon. The only downside to it is that it's going to require a significant amount of energy to use, and it's unlikely that all the ship's systems will be able to run at 100% efficiency while you're firing the Exodus. And the reason why this kit can be applied to both the P and the M is to give the M owners more options. Like, for instance, if they want to use the kit to upgrade some of the remote turrets to bladed turrets, or even replace the rail cannon with the beam weapon. And by mix and matching options from the kit, you can alter the focus of the M for being better at taking out larger ships to being a better anti-fighter craft and anti-torpedo screen. That's what I like about this kit, is that it gives the player options, and they can use it to turn the P from an undergun mini-carrier into the powerhouse that it was meant to be. Or it can be used to let M owners hand-tailor what their ship is more effective at doing depending on what your needs are going to be during a fleet battle. Well, that's going to be it for this video on the Idris and its variants. I'd like to thank everybody for liking and subscribing, and a special thanks goes out to my patrons for their support. Thanks for watching, and take care.